Hi and welcome. I'm Sandy from Minerva and today we are going to do a sew along with Closet Core Patterns Ebony Knit Dress. This is the pattern we're going to be using. This is the Ebony Knit Dress. We're going to be making this swing dress. It's got long sleeves and this really nice kind of lowered scoop collar. This also is part of the pattern. It's a, a swing top with a high low and a raglan sleeve same type of neckline and I'm actually wearing the swing top and you can see this neckline is beautifully put together. The pattern is really well drafted and then the raglan sleeves, you don't even notice them with this wild print. This is a Jersey viscose print from Minerva and you don't even notice the raglan sleeves but yet they're so comfortable. Raglan sleeves are really uh, comfortable. You could do a two-tone on this and it would be really cute. So, but today we are going to be doing this dress. So it has traditional sleeves, a little bit of a high-low hem, pretty much straight across. You can see there's a little bit, a very small high-low hem. And besides our pattern, which we need, we need a fabric. This is a, this is a bamboo knit. This is what we're gonna make the dress out of. It's actually beautiful to sew with. If you've never worn bamboo, you're absolutely gonna love it. It just drapes on the body. It's so beautiful to wear, but you can see because it, it's absolutely drapey and it's terrific to work with, as is this Jersey viscose. It actually flows. This is more of a summer lightweight fabric and it actually flows really well. And I'll add some pictures of this and you can read the write-up about this too. This is actually on the Minerva site. So some of the supplies that we're gonna need, we have our fabric, we have this really nice uh, bamboo, we have the pattern, and then when you sew jersey, one of the things you wanna use is a jersey needle. It will help your machine uh, work through the fabric a little bit easier. Jersey can be a little trickly, tricky, a little fiddly, and uh, so you wanna keep that in mind. And then also a twin needle, because this, this, um, pattern calls for twin needle stitching around the neckline so it looks more like ready to wear which is our goal right our goal is to come up with something that looks like high-end ready wear ready to wear and also twin needles around the sleeve and the hem of the garment and then our really good thread this is Gudemann's and it matches perfectly the last thing you're going to need for this um, ebony dress is some clear elastic and the clear elastic will help stabilize the shoulder from stretching. This doesn't have it because it's a raglan sleeve, so it's not in here because the seam is down here. But when you have a seam up here and it's a really stretchy knit, having that clear elastic in there, you just stitch it on, it helps stabilize the dress. It's, it's stretchy, so it moves with the dress, but it helps keep it from you know drooping and drooping and hanging up. So we don't want any of that. Now, once you decide, check your size chart and figure out your size chart and your measurement and what size you want to make. And keep in mind that a knit garment has negative ease. So if you were to make a cotton blouse, you would need to make sure that the blouse went all the way around you and that there was ease, movement ease in the blouse, right? With a knit garment, the ease is negative, which means the garment traditionally is smaller than your body, um, particularly up here in the bust area. This is a swing dress, so obviously this part down here is going to be loose, but you want this to fit. You want the sleeves to fit. You don't want them too loose because the knit just doesn't, it's not appropriate for a knit. Um, so it is going to have a little bit of negative ease and that gives the garment the actual fit because the garment stretches back and forth. But knits are so easy to wear. They're so casual. They're perfect for, uh, you know, if you need to video chat and working at home and they're comfy and cozy, but yet if you throw on a pair of tights and a cute pair of boots, you can be out the door and look fabulous. So knits are something that we really need to tackle and, and learn, and they're really not that hard. You just need to use the right settings on your machine and we're gonna talk about all of that. So we're going to cut this out and we're gonna pick out our pattern. We're gonna cut this out. And again, this jersey is absolutely delightful to cut out. It doesn't move, it doesn't roll. Um, so you wanna consider this bamboo jersey, a jersey. And this comes in, oh my gosh, it comes in like I think a dozen different colors or maybe even more. Every color you could possibly want, you can find in this absolutely beautiful bamboo fabric. So. We are going to cut everything out and we'll get back and get started. Okay, so I have all my pieces cut out now and I just wanted to go over a couple of items that you might wanna think about as you are cutting your pieces out. First of all, when you lay out jersey, you wanna make sure you don't have any rumples or wrinkles 
under in the under or upper piece so we have nice smooth pieces that are the same size. The other thing is this fabric, the right side and the wrong side is almost identical. It's really hard to tell the difference, but if you have two pieces going together and they're not the same side, sometimes there's enough difference that you can see it once the garment's constructed. So I always decide what's going to be the front and what's gonna be the, the right side and the wrong side of my fabric. And then I put a pin as I'm cutting the pieces out on the right side of the fabric. So I just stick a little pin in there. And then when I pick it up, I don't have to think about it. I know right away that that is the right side of the garment. Make sure that you mark the hash marks on the sleeve because it's not symmetrical. One side of the sleeve is actually uh, shaped differently than the other. So you need to know which sleeve is the right sleeve and which sleeve is the left sleeve for, in order for this to go on correctly. Now, as far as the dress neckline goes, there are two options on this neckline. You have a jewel neckline and you have a scoop neckline. And I decided for my purposes, we're gonna go with the jewel neckline, uh, but there is this option. And then there's a third option, which is on the top with a raglan sleeve. So there are three different uh, neck bands. So you wanna make sure that you get the right neck band. De uh, neck band D is for the scoop neckline, that's super long. And then neck band E is for the jewel neckline and that's the one we're gonna use. And so our pieces are all cut out and ready to go. Two sleeves, a neck band, a front and a back. Really not a lot of pieces to put together. So now I am going to take my, the next step is to take my neck band and put the right sides together. And I'm just gonna sew a little seam along this edge. Just gonna sew these together. So then I'll have a circle. So that's the first step for my stitching. That's the first stitching step that I'm going to do. The other thing I want you to think about is I want you to go to the machine and we're gonna practice some stitching techniques before we actually start sewing on our garment. So take some of your scraps and we're gonna go through a couple of different options. You may or may not have a serger or an overlocker, which you, if you do, that's great. I like to stitch with a straight stitch and then serge the edges on my knit garment because my serger doesn't have a straight stitch that goes along with the overlock portion of it. But there's also, if you don't have a serger, that's perfectly fine. You can sew knit successfully. Many machines have a knit stitch on them. And also you can use a really super narrow zigzag. So we're gonna go explore a couple of those stitches now. All right, so let's talk about sewing knits. There are a couple of different options, as we explained earlier. I have my Jersey needle in the machine. One of the things you want, the very first thing you wanna start off with is you wanna consider where you're starting your fabric. If you start your fabric out here before in front of the needle, when it gets to the needle, or if you start right at the needle, the needle is going to jam it down into the throat plate and you're gonna end up with a big knot and a kind of a funky dent in the end of your seam allowance. You don't want that. So if you push your fabric an eighth to a quarter of an inch past the needle, before you start sewing, that will help tremendously. And what I do is I go forward a stitch and then you can back up almost to the edge and then you can go forward. And right now we're just doing a straight stitch on the machine just to see how that's gonna work. There's my straight stitch. I know it's very dark, but when you pull on that, it doesn't have a lot of give and the threads will pop. So that's not the best alternative for sewing knits. There's no give there. So one of the other options you can use is a zigzag stitch. This machine, uh, sorry, one of the other options you can use is a knit stitch. This machine actually has a knit stitch. The problem with that, I find, is that it takes forever because it's sewing three stitches in a row. And just for time purposes, I'm not gonna back up on this, but I want this takes forever to sew. Because it goes over and over the same fabric.
but what it does is it gives me some stretchability in the stitches, which really helps tremendously if you don't have an overlocker. So check your machine to see if it has a stretch stitch because that will go a long way to keeping your garments nice and stretchy and you won't be popping seams when you sit down, which is really not a good thing. Try to avoid that, huh? So the third option, if you don't have an overlocker and you don't have a stretch stitch on your machine, is to use a super narrow zigzag. I'm gonna set this to a zigzag. I'm gonna keep my stitch fairly long. Um, and then I'm going to make the zigzag very narrow. So you can barely tell when you look at it that it's a zigzag. But what that does is it gives the fabric a place to move. So now I can stretch this fabric. The only thing you wanna make sure is that if your zigzag is too big, when you open up the seam, you can see stitches. So this one, and I know it's really hard because it's dark, you can't see the stitches on it, so it's narrow enough. But that zigzag will give you just a little bit of give. So that would be your third option for sewing knits. And always, before you start sewing a project, you check your machine for stitch length and um, stitch width and length and make sure everything is all set before you actually start stitching on your garment for real. And I am going to sew my garment with the knit stitch that I have on my machine. And I'm going to work it that way instead of overlocking it. And we'll see how that comes out. Um, yeah, and don't forget the Jersey needle because that makes an enormous difference. So three eighths of an inch with some stitch that will give you some stretchability. Um, I'm gonna start sewing and we'll move forward. We are back and we have finished our neckband. We sewed the short ends, wrong side, uh, right sides together, and then press the seam open. And then we folded the band wrong sides together and I gave it a little press. Make sure there's no twisting. So the wrong sides are together. So our, our neck band is finished and ready to go. So we're just gonna set that aside for now. We're gonna need it shortly. And this is the back of our dress and we're going to apply this clear plastic tape, right? It's very stretchy. That's the goal. The goal is that it stretches with the garment, but it comes back and gives the fabric a little bit of stability. So according to the directions, we're going to sew this on the seam edge on the wrong side of our back piece. Now I know this is the wrong side of my piece because I have a pin on the other side, which tells me that's the front of my garment, so I don't have to think about it. So I'm going to sew these on with a zigzag stitch to the wrong side of the back piece, shoulder seam. And then the next thing I'm going to do is sew the right sides together of the shoulder seams, uh, matching front and back along the shoulder seams. Okay, so that's pretty easy. We're not gonna surge. We're gonna use our knit stitch. It says to surge or zigzag. We're not gonna do that, but that is definitely an option for you. Now the next step in our process is to put the neck band on. So we had sewn our neck band together. Right? and pressed it wrong sides together. So this is the outside we're looking at. You're gonna put a pin in the back seam. So you're gonna put a pin in the back seam and then you're gonna fold the neck band in half. So this, would, this first pin would be the center back and then you're going to put a pin at the other end and that is the cent that's gonna be the center front. We need to divide this into quarters so we can evenly space out all the ease around the neck. The neck band is smaller than the opening. And what that does is it kind of sucks it together and holds it so it lays nice and flat against your skin. If they were the same size, you would end up with this wave, wavy, ruffly neck band that wouldn't lay flat, it would kind of flop over. So we want it a little bit smaller and we can do that with a knit because it, and it just, tightens the whole thing up so it lays nice and flat. So we now we have this in half. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up and match these two pins, the front and the back pin. And I'm gonna put pins on either side. All right, so there's pins evenly spaced, it's divided into quarters. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the top. We sewed the shoulders together. 
And I want to talk about, there's a lot of fabric here. It's heavy, right? So you want to make sure it's not dragging on the floor when you sew it. Your machine will struggle and it will skip and your, everything will slide if your fabric is hanging off of the table. So if you have a nice bench or a table for your machine, make sure you use it. If you don't, at least make sure the fabric is up on the table that you're sewing so it's not hanging off of the machine and putting stress on it. So what I did was I folded the, the neckline, matched up my shoulder seams and put a pin in the center back and a pin in the center front. So now I have divided the neckline on my garment in half. And what I want to do now is match those pins up. So I'm going to fold it this way. So I'm going to match up the center front pin and the center back pin and then smooth out the rest of this. Now you'll notice because the way the necklines are cut, particularly if you use the scoop neckline, the front has more neckline than the back. That's why we're quartering this. You can't use the shoulder seams as a gauge for your quarter, because if you look at mine, the shoulder seam is down here, and this is really where the pin is gonna go. So now I've lined up my neckline pretty good. So it's even all the way around. The center front and the center back pins are aligned next to each other. So this gives me my quarter. I'm gonna put a pin in here and a pin in here. And those will correspond to the pins on my neckband and you can see there's my shoulder seam and there's my pin and that's because the front neckline length is longer than the back neckline. So from the front of the garment, the right side, lay this out so you can see it. All right, so here's my back, here's my front, and here's my neck band, and I'm gonna find the pin that is in the back piece with the seam, and I'm gonna match that up to this pin on the back of my neckline. And I'm matching the folded raw edges of the neck band to the, full, to the raw edges of my garment. And I'm gonna take this next pin that's at the quarter mark, secure that there, I'm gonna go around to the front. Make sure you're not twisting your neck band as you go around. And the neck band is gonna be smaller. That's one thing nice about knits, that you stretch, right? That is the goal. So we're gonna match up these front pins and secure that. And then match up these last quarter pins here and secure that. So now I have my neck band secured to my garment in four spots. And you can certainly go in and you can see how much loosely, how much looser this is. You can certainly go in and fiddle with this and add a pin in between each of these if it makes you comfortable. Just make sure that you balance the ease that's left because there's, you have to ease this bottom, the neckline into the neck band. You want to put the neckline down to the feed dogs. That will be the first thing you do because the feed dogs move fabric faster at the bottom than the presser foot moves it at the top. So that will help ease this in. The second thing you want to do is you want to stretch the neck band a little, not the neck, but the, not the neck of the garment, but the neck band itself. You can stretch it a little to make it fit with the neck opening. And be very careful because you're sewing three layers of fabric together. You want to make sure that as you're sewing them, all three are together. So take your time with this. This is not something that's going to happen immediately. Also, you want to make sure that your seam allowance is true on this because you're going to turn it over. And if your seam allowance is wavy, thick in some parts and thin in the other, other the neck band is going to reflect that and you're not going to get that really nice ready to wear look. So out of the whole garment, this probably takes the most amount of time. I want you to take your time with it and uh, just go slowly because picking out overlocking or knit stitching or even a multiple zigzag is not fun out of a knit, period. <laughs> so just take your time, go slow, 
put a lot of pins in if you need to, and uh, you'll be great. All right, we went through and we sewed on our neckband, right? Being very careful to make sure that our seam allowances are even all the way around. We sewed it onto the right side of our garment, and then you're gonna press it so it stands up and that the seam allowance lays flat and goes towards the garment. And you're gonna have a really nice neckband. And you wanna go all the way around and check and make sure you don't have any little puckers or pleats around here if you do take them out. And then the instructions call for a twin needle stitching just below the neckband on the garment, which gives it this really nice ready way to look. And it also keeps the flange of the seam allowance down towards the garment and gives you a really nice look. They call to do that now. I'm going to wait and do it at the end of the garment when I do all of my twin needle stitching. Certainly you can do it now. I mean, the advantage of that is that you can lay it flat on your machine, but I'm very confident that you and I can get it through the machine and do it when we have the twin needle in. Just save some time from putting the needle in and taking it out. So I'm gonna move forward to the next step and then I will actually come back and do this afterwards. So the next step is the sleeve. So we have our neck in and we have our shoulder seams sewn together. And we're going to sew on our sleeves. So I'll start with this side. And I have marked the wrong side of my garment with chalk because this sleeve is not symmetrical. All right, we're gonna put the sleeve in now. That is the next step. And we have several notches marked on our sleeve and notches on the dress. And it's really important that you match up the notches because this sleeve, as you can see, is not symmetrical. It's not shaped. It's not shaped the same way on each side. This slope is longer and this one's shorter. And that's to fit your body better. So we're going to match up the notches and make sure that we have the right sleeve on the right side of the garment. So my garment is face up, my sleeve is face up, and on this side I have one notch on my sleeve and one notch on my garden, garment, and on this side I have two notches on my sleeve and I have two notches on my garment. So I know that those are gonna go together and I want right sides facing each other, so I'm gonna flip my sleeve up and I have one notch at the top, and that notch is going to match my seam, my shoulder seam. So I'm gonna pin that there. And I'm actually gonna flip this all over because I want my sleeve to be at the bottom so the feed dogs will help with fitting that in. So once I pin the mark to the shoulder seam, I'm gonna go and pin the edge of my sleeve to my garment. And then I'm going to pin the mark where the mark is because that will help me determine where all the ease is gonna go. Now, in general, and particularly in this case, this section, so this is the side of my dress, right? This is the side of my dress. This section is the underarm section, and that is a one-to-one -one ratio when you do a sleeve. You don't need any extra gathering underneath your arm, so this fits one-to-one. -one. With the knit, sometimes it grabs a little, you just kind of have to give it a little wiggle. This next section, we have a convex and a concave seam going together, so we need to kind of work this a little bit, and the sleeve cap is a little bit bigger than the armhole. So we just wanna match up the edges and just pin it around. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're going to pin the edge of the arm on the dress. Whoops, I need my sleeve. We're gonna pin the edge of the sleeve to the edge of the dress. And then we're gonna pin up our marks. And 
and then it's one to one under the arm. So there's no fitting there. And then between the mark and the shoulder seam, there's a little bit of fitting. So we want to go through and just, just kind of finger the fabric along. You don't need to stretch it. You just need to match the edges and finger the fabric. And you'll find with this pattern that it fits together without a struggle. Look at that. So there is my sleeve and I'm going to sew the sleeve into the armhole before I sew up the side seams. So I'm going to do both of my sleeves and I'll be back. Okay, we have sewn in our sleeves and you have this thing that looks like a big piece of fabric all sewn together. But you can see what a beautiful job this, how beautiful that sleeve looks. And you're going to press it, I've pressed this side. And you're gonna press the seam allowance towards the sleeve. And what that does is it gives a little body to the cap. Um, but you look at that seam, look at how beautifully that goes together. You almost don't even see the seam, right? It blends so gorgeously together. That, we are almost done. So that was sleeves, so easy, so much easier than setting them into an armhole. Right, and almost any knit pattern can be done this way with a flat sewn sleeve. So perfect, perfect and quick and simple and easy and all those wonderful things. Next thing we have to do is sew up the side seams. So we're going to fold our garment in on itself, right sides together. And we're going to pin the sleeve. I'm going to Start at the cuff. I like to start at one end and then start at the next end juncture that I want to be um, as a marker. So for in this case, I want the underarm seams to match. So I'm gonna pin those next. All right, so we're gonna sew up the side seam. So we're gonna pin this edge of the armhole. I've got it all pinned here. And then I'm gonna pin the underarm matching the seam there because that's a critical juncture. I want to make sure that that matches correctly. And then I just put a couple of extra pins in here to hold the sleeve in place. And I'm going to do the same thing with the side seam. I'm going to pin, it's pinned at the underarm and I'm going to pin it at the bottom matching the edges so my bottom edges match. And then I'm going to pin it, just a few pins just to hold it together so when I take it through the machine it doesn't get away from me and wobble. And I'm going to do that to both sides. Make sure that you do press your seam allowance on your sleeve cap before you um, pin the side seams together because this is much easier to do when it's flat. So I'm going to sew up both side seams. Once that's done, the dress is finished. We need to do a hem, sleeve hems, and a, a twin needle stitch around the neckband because we, we have to go back and do that stuff. And your dress is done. This dress is so fast and so cute. Wait till you see it all finished. All right. Side seams. Now look at this. Our dress is all sewn together. We sewed up the side seam and then up the arm. And because you want the seam on the armhole to go into the arm, I suggest you start at the hem of the dress. And so that way it's a lot easier to go through that heavy kind of clump of fabric. Now what I did do is I surged the edges of my sleeves and my hem because I wanted a nice clean finish. Certainly you do not have to do that, but my cutting is not as pretty. You can take a rotary cutter and make it nice and smooth if you don't um, wanna have a bumpy inside. You know, you don't wanna double fold this too much because what happens is it gets too bulky. So I surged, I surged the edge. Let me take these pins out here. I surged the hem edge, as you can see. You see, there we go. I surged the hem edge and then the pattern calls to turn it under a half inch, which I did and I pressed it. Now this bamboo, if you're using Minerva's bamboo, it's so great and it takes a really good press. And I just did put a few pins in it just to keep me on track as I'm going through because I'm stitching 
from the top when I do a twin needle because the twin needles are on the top and the bobbin is going back and forth on along the bottom. So I did put a few pins in it, but if you pre-press it before you do this, you avoid those little crinkles and crumples that happen as you're trying to get around corners and you know the fabric doesn't know exactly where to go. I mean, you're taking something that's one dimensional and you're turning it into something that's multi-dimensional. So it's, it's really important to do that. So I do press it, measure it and press it at the ironing board. And then, um, and then put a few pins in it. So we're going to go put in our twin needle and finish up our dress. Pretty exciting. All right. So let's set up our machine for our twin needle stitch. I've removed my jersey needle, I've taken that out. It's a single needle, right, with one shank. And now I am going to put in my twin needle. And that's exactly what it is. It's two needles and they're connected with one shank. So it fits into your machine exactly the same way as your single needle does, except you have two needles coming down. So you're going to need two spools of thread at the top of your machine. Obviously it's going to be the thread that matches your fabric. And then you're gonna insert this into the machine according to your manufacturer's instructions. However you put in your needles, we're gonna insert this. And then one thread goes through one needle, one of the top threads and the other thread, the other top thread goes through the other needle. And what happens as the two threads come down, the bobbin thread, which stays the same, you don't need to make any changes to the bobbin thread, the bobbin thread goes back and forth between the two threads and that creates a stretchy stitch that's perfectly spaced because these needles are perfectly spaced apart. And like any stitch, you need to practice, you need to take it on a piece of practice uh, fabric. So I'm gonna thread these needles right now. All right, my needles are threaded. Everything's ready to go. You want to set, put your settings back on your general stitch. This is uh, if you were using a stretch stitch or a zigzag stitch, you want to put your machine back to whatever it is that you generally use. And we're going to practice. We're going to fold some of the fabric underneath, just like it would be in our garments. So we have the two thicknesses, just like it would be on the piece that we're going to sew because we want to see how this is going to work and make sure that the settings are all correct before we put it on our garment. So there's my twin needle stitch. It's beautiful, right? And you can see on the back how the bobbin went back and forth and that's what gives me this really nice stretchy stitch but these are perfectly spaced and they go all the way around and they hem your garment just like you see in ready to wear so we are going to start with the hem and i'm going to go all the way around the hem and the sleeves and then i'm also going to do the neck and then we are finished and our garment is all done so just be careful as you're sewing that wherever you start your guide for your machine, for your needles against your foot, that you use that all the way around and your stitches will be continuous and perfect. So we finished our twin needle hem. It looks beautiful all the way around, nice and smooth and even, no rumples. Even on the back, it looks great. So when the dress hangs open a little bit, if you cross your legs, it looks absolutely beautiful finished inside. I'm gonna show you the neck. We're gonna get started on the neck. And if you remember, we sewed the neckband on and then we have this seam allowance which we're going to press towards the dress. So the neckband is gonna kind of stand alone. And I like to start on the shoulder start on this one over here. So I want to make sure that that neckband is pushed down. I'm going to take my tray off. And that neckband is pushed down and we're going to sew fairly close to the neckband edge. So here is my neckband right here and here is the seam and I'm going to sew on the garment side of the seam. And I'm gonna keep my hands on top 
to make sure this is smoothed away. And my other hand with my fingers underneath to make sure that the seam allowance stays towards the garment. So I don't want it to turn up. I want it to be sewn down. That wraps up our sew along for the Ebony Tea from Closet Core Pattern. An absolutely adorable tunic and then this beautiful teal bamboo dress. Now, if you haven't sewn with bamboo before, you have to do it. Look at how swooshy and movie that is. It's so beautiful, right? We'll give you some close-ups of the details, but we used a double needle stitch on the hem of the sleeve and on the hem of the dress and then around the collar to give that real ready-to-wear uh, high-end fashion look. This fabric, the colors are so vibrant and so beautiful and the fabric is just so soft against your skin. It's absolutely gorgeous. You need to give it a try. So on behalf of Minerva, I want to invite you to tag us on your makes, right? Go to the Minerva website, put up your makes on social media, tag us, hashtag Minerva makes and hashtag Minerva makers. We'd love to see everything that you're doing and in particular the ebony dress. So on behalf of Minerva, I'm your instructor, Sandy, and I want to thank you for joining us on this ebony closet core pattern so long. Bye.